Welcome to another episode of Soil and Crop Sciences 681 seminar. Today we've got two awesome speakers to talk to you. One is not from um, SCSC, one is a MEP student. We're going to go up first and then we're going to have somebody from Plant Breeding. So, Catherine, you're going to introduce our first speaker. The mic was not on. Is that okay? It's on. Okay. It's on. It's on. All right. So our first speaker today is La Hong Ju, and um, she's a PhD candidate in the Molecular and Environmental Plant Sciences Program, and her research is centered on characterizing single cell um, immune response at the single cell resolution level in a Arabidopsis root. She's deploying the single cell RNA-seq technology to create a transcriptome cell profile in response to different pathogen elicitors. So today, Lahong will be talking to us about her RNA-seq technology study. And in her free time, Lahong loves to play tennis and cook delicious Asian meals. Let's welcome Lahong. <coughs> Thank you, Catherine. Good afternoon, everyone. Please help me. You don't have to hold it. I don't know how to. Okay. Okay. I would like I to help you, but yeah, why? I don't really know how it works. I don't know. I don't know why it's happening. Um, That's true. Uh, let's see. Um, no. Not responding. Anybody have any expertise in this? Move Look. the cursor over to the same screen as the projector. Okay. Click on it again because there you go. Uh, you were there a second ago. Oh. Now click. <laughs> and you can get there. You go. All right. Thank you. Thanks. You can just use the. Uh, Okay, good afternoon, everyone. My name is La Hong Xu. Uh, I'm, I'm, uh, my major is uh, molecular and uh, environmental plant sciences. My research project is characterization of the localized immune responses at the single cell resolution in a robotopsis roots. So how does plant root coexist with microorganisms? Plant roots take up nutrients and water from soil, which is enriched with microorganisms. So it is important for root to avoid pathogen attack in order to grow in the soil. Here shows the what? You can use the pointer. Oh. The pointer by the microphone now. Okay. But, but the problem is that this one is not so. Yeah. I can't help no. it. This is a pointer. But this is a true. laser beam. But it, could it go down or look up? No. This is true. That doesn't work. No. 
Now, now try. There you go. Okay. So plant roots pick up nutrients and uh, pick up nutrients and water from the uh, from the soil, which is enriched with microorganisms. So it is important for roots to avoid the passenger attack in order to grow in the soil. Here shows this is a plant cell membrane. Plant, cell, plant cells could uh, recognize bacteria, fungi, and uh, plant uh, endangerous peptide to, uh, to initiate uh, immune response in plant cells. Flexion 2 is a small peptide from, from bacterial pathogen. It could uh, be recognized by its receptor F2 and the co-receptor back one on cell, plant cell membrane. Upon the recognition of flag chain two, these receptors will transduce the signal downstream uh, to downstream components to activate its immune response in plants. Similarly, chitin is a fragment from a fungal cell wall. It could be perceived by uh, LY case on the plant cell membrane then transduce the signal downstream. PEP1 is a plant endogenous peptide. It could be perceived by PEPR and BEC1. Scoopton is also a plant endogenous peptide that can uh, be perceived by MIG2 and BEC1. Screw1 is, uh, is another plant endogenous peptide that can be perceived by NAT1 and uh, its co-receptor co back one. Upon the, uh, the perceptions of these initiators by the receptors on plant cell, uh, plant cell membrane, this, uh, these receptors will transduce the signal downstream to, uh, to downstream components and activate the immune response genes. According to recent report, these different initiators could uh, uh, trigger similar immune response in uh, plant leaves. This heat map shows, indicates that the uh, transcriptional response to different uh, initiators are consistent. Uh, on your slides, the, the slide will look like not uh, the slide they're talking about. The slides we look at on the screen is not what uh, you are talking about. You're, we are in slide 15 from I, the screen. Oh, so I think uh, the people on the Zoom is different from here. Yeah. Any, any advice from the uh, gallery here? Just like Usually when you present, um, you might have to switch your screen sharing. But normally when you present on PowerPoint, especially an extended display, it creates a new window. Okay, let this be a lesson to all. If you're not master of the technology, just do it the old fashioned way. Can you do it the old fashioned way? What? Without the notes? With, yeah, I, I didn't see the notes. Okay. It's Maybe okay. you slide a shoe. I think what your shoe here is. Uh, but I couldn't That's open the slide. Switch the screen. Yeah. What are what slide are you seeing? The, 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 the slide. Screen. What slide are you looking at, Ping? A uh, fifteen. Yes, yeah, just here. So it's different from here. Okay. Are we going to shut this down and restart it? Yes. Sure. Okay. So. Go ahead. Because the zoom option you hit the share screen sure. and mm -hmm. the PowerPoint that we're sharing. Okay, I think I should use. Yeah, because it creates a separate window. Not system, just duplicate. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what slide are you looking at now, Ping? Now it looks good, at least the slides are moving. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah.
So this heat map indicates that the uh, transcriptional factors to different initiators are uh, congruent, congruent in use. But uh, it is a bug on seek which studies gene expression pattern at the population level. Yeah, at the population level. Here shows the structure of Aeropodopsis roots. In Aeropodopsis roots, the root can be uh, classified into four root zones and uh, six root cell types. The root cap zone includes a uh, little root cap and a columella. The meristematic zone, elongation zone, and the maturation zone. These three zones include four cell types, include Epidermis, cortex, endodermis, and steel. So, according to recent report, uh, the flexion to triggered immune response is limited to limited to the meristematic zone and the elongation zone. There is a low response in differentiation zone, and this response is mainly at the epidermis. However, the PEP1 induced uh, immune response is uh, limited to transition zone and the elongation zone, and they are mainly in the steel. Here shows the uh, 10x genomic single cell workflow. Firstly, the GRBs cell span and oil are loaded into the pipeline. Then the, uh, the each droplet for catch uh, catch one piece and uh, one cells. Then the cell uh, cell in the droplet will the cell membrane in the droplet will be dissolved. The messenger RNA will be trans uh, reverse transcribed in to DNA in each droplet. Then the droplet will be uh, will be uh, broken with the recover with agent to release the cDNA. The uh, bulk cDNA will be collected to uh, and used for sequencing. For each base, there are many, there are, there are many primers. And these primers have the same 10X barcode, but a different UMIs. The 10X barcode will be used as a cell barcode. The UMI were used to use as a mRNA barcode to identify mRNA. So compared to single RNA-seq, bulk, uh, bulk RNA-seq studies gene expression pattern at uh, the population level, and it reflects the average gene expression across thousands of cells. However, the single cell RNA-seq can explore gene expression profile at the single cell level and identify cell, type, cell types and cell type specific genes and the regulatory network. So we hypothesis that a single cell RNA can help us to understand the cell signaling at a higher resolution. Our objectives are to identify the tissue and the cell type specific immune response genes in aerobopsis roots at the single cell level and explore cell type specific regulatory networks of immune response in aerobopsis roots at the single cell level. Here shows the research approach. We firstly uh, prepare different initiatives and uh, treat the uh, root seedlings of uh, with these different initiators and prepare the and isolate the single cells, then perform drop seek to get a single cell library. Then uh, once we get the the ten uh, x cDNA box cDNA and send them for single cell sequencing, then we get the uh, single cell expression profile. After bioinformatics. Uh, bioinformatic analysis, we can cluster our, sing our single cells into different cell types. So here shows uh, the single cell we got from single cell RSEQ. 
uh, we, we did uh, seven samples with different treatment, and these cells could be classified into nine clusters. Uh, according to the uh, root structure, we allocated the allocated the single cell uh, data with with four root zones and the cell uh, diff and six cell types for each cell. Then we snip, uh, split the uh, single cell data into, into seven uh, samples. This data shows that uh, uh, cells belonging to the same cell type are clustered together. But the initiator treat treatment doesn't affect the cell types or cell identity. So this heat map shows the uh, shows the uh, number of up number of upregulated differential expression genes in uh, each root cell type and the root zones. Firstly, we can say that uh, the uh, these three phytocytokines could induce much more DEGs than these two two maps. Then the uh, then for these two maps, the root camp and uh, the uh, epidermal of maturation zone have stronger immune response than the meristematic zone and the elongation zone, which suggests that the um, root cap may act as centuries providing special, special protection to the root meristem cells. Thanks, uh, lastly, the PEP1 induces most of the DEGs in the sphere of maturation zone. However, the scoop 10 and the screw 1 induce the, the most DEGs in columella uh, and the epidermis of maturation zone. So this suggests that uh, the different phytocytokines induce immune response at uh, different cell types, which provide a, a mechanism for the coordination of different phytocytokines in activating immunity. So because the flat 22 induces less immune response in plant root, we uh, checked uh, the expression of uh, flag 22 receptor FS2 and its co-receptor BEC1, BQQ1, and the uh, downstream components BQ1 on uh, to say the expression level of this flag 22 pathway components. It shows that flag 22 is, uh, it shows that FS2 is only expressed uh, you know, a small number of epidermal cells in the in the root camp and epidermal cells, which lead to the uh, weak immune response in root. Similarly, we also checked the, the uh, chitin receptor LYK4 and the CERC1 and the PBL's expression in root cells. We found that uh, PBL lighting is uh, is only expressed in a small number of root cells, and the PBL twenty is not expressed, which may explain the weak immune response of chitin in root. Similarly, we check the, the expression uh, of PEP1 receptor PPR1, PPR2, and the uh, uh, scopin receptor MIC2 and the screw1 receptor not in the single cell, we found that uh, the expression of the of these three initi of this receptors could be these receptors could uh, express in most root cells, so they could uh, uh, trigger stronger immune response. So we, uh, the the map kinase activation assay. Also, indi uh, also indicates that uh, the three phytocytokines trigger strong, a uh, stronger immune response in root. Uh, trigger stronger immune response than the maps in root. So this is consistent with our single cell RSync results. Similarly, the 
root growth inhibition also indicates that the three uh, phytocytokines <coughs> trigger stronger immune response than these two maps in root. In addition, we found that uh, the, uh, the bacteria packed with GFP could uh, grow around the uh, around meristematic zone and the elongation zone where the immune response is weak. And it is also uh, similar to, uh, to fungal fragilum. It also grow around the meristematic zone and the innovation zone where the immune response is quite weak. This result is consistent with our single unseek data. Here shows, uh, this heat map shows the uh, initiator triggered cell type specific genes in root. We can say that uh, this part of genes are induced the, uh, by the phytocytokines, but a lot of MAP. And uh, this part of genes could only induce by PEP1 only. And uh, this part of genes could upregulate the by MAP, but downregulate by phytocytokines. So, so this heat map reveals the um, difference of genes in uh, the difference of gene induction in different root cell types by different initiator treatment, which is different with this previous study that uh, transcriptional response to diverse patterns are remark remarkably consistent in new tissues. In addition, this mosaic uh, pattern of gene induction in response to different initiators suggests that uh, the immune response is uh, treatment root zone and uh, cell type specific. The goal uh, term enrichment of the cell type sp sp uh, specific uh, DEGs indicates that uh, the, uh, the upregulated genes following the uh, phytocytokines treatment in different cell types and the root zones are strongly enriched in many uh, immunity-related goal terms, such as defense to uh, bacterial, uh, def response to chitins, response to uh, all medicines. In conclusion, our results indicate that uh, the, uh, the root zone and the root cell types differ in their response to different initiators. Secondly, the phytocytokines trigger stronger immune response than MAPs in roots. Third, MAP, uh, MAPs trigger less immune response in meristematic zone <coughs> and the elongation zone. The expression pattern induced by, uh, induced by school 10 and school 1 are similar, to, are similar but are stronger than the MAPs. Uh, as the different cell types respond differently to, uh, to uh, response differently. So we, we uh, hypothesis that uh, it may be regulated by the up, up, uh, upstream transcription factors. So we, uh, we identify the, the we identify the upstream transcription factors for each cell type or uh, with different uh, or uh, across different treatment. We found that uh, ERF5 and uh, ERF104 are the major uh, regulators in nature root camp and uh, columella in response to in response to screw one. In addition, the ERF5 and the ERF4 have conserved the DNA binding sequence with the uh, GCC box. But also, I find that the ERF5 um, regulates AN1 in columella, test uh, uh, D2 in columella, and the UN11 in nature root camp. And the ERF4 could uh, regulate this is for uh, targets in nature root camp. ERF, GFP, and the 
BRF one hundred four DFP indicates these two transcription factors are located in the in the nucleus. After the um, the scopin treatment doesn't affect the protein level of ERF one hundred four and ERF five. The uh, cheap assay indicates that uh, the uh, certain treatment could enhance enhance ERF binding to its reset uh, to its targets. Similarly, scopin also enhances the binding of ERF one hundred four to to its targets. So, in conclusion. ERF5 and ERF104 are the key regulators in natural root camp, uh, in root camp. and uh, the scope term can enhance the DNA, DNA binding activity of these two receptors on their targets. So, our, uh, so the single cell RSEC is a powerful tool to study tissue and cell type specific uh, regulatory network. And uh, it will, will reveal more scientific findings which you couldn't get from back RSEC. So thank you. Uh, thank you to my advisor, Dr. Pinhe and uh, uh, Nihuo Shan. They are very good, very kind uh, mentors and very nice to students. And uh, I appreciate uh, uh, their guidance to me to, uh, to finish this project. I also appreciate uh, my collaborators. They helped me a lot on doing this project. Okay, that's all. Questions? I got a question. Oh, good. So, in one of the images, you show that by introducing uh, certain fragments and induce some sort of immune response for the root, it will stop the microbes from colonizing the root tissues. So I'm kind of wondering, have you tried to induce that response with the other stuff that you have shown? Okay, I actually go to that slide. It might be a lot easier to understand. Yeah. Which slides are you? Uh, there is a slide where you show the bacterial infection of the root this with one? GFT tag. This one? Yep. So in this picture, you only tested the flag 22 and the kind from the fungi. <coughs> Have you tried to use the uh, cytokinin? No. Cytokinin? Yeah. yeah. Because um, cytokinin is the plant uh, in dangerous plant type. So it uh, uh, could uh, produce only by the plant. Yeah. So have you tried to use that as a treatment and then yeah, see we... if that bacterial can still colonize the? Okay, that will be called the uh, uh, immune immunity protection. We we didn't did do that yet because uh, we are focused on the different treatment, the immunity in response to different treatment, not the immunity protection. Oh, okay. Yeah. So in terms of just practicality wise, or say farmers or something, do you think it's practical? For them to maybe introduce those immunity compounds so that they can build up resistance to certain disease. Yeah, that's our goal because um, nowadays the the uh, you if you enhance the immunity in plants, it will inhibit the growth. Like we showed here, if in uh, for example, the three phytokines enhances the immunity in the plant, but uh, the growth, the root will grow, uh, the root growth will be inhibited. So we want to find, uh, we found a, want, want to find a, a components that could both enhance the immunity, but not inhibit the growth. Okay, thank you.
and I have to. So, so obviously the single cell is getting us a lot further than when we just grind up the whole root. But <clears throat> what about, do you expect to see differences based on time? Because you've basically taken a snapshot, a picture at one point in time. Do you think you'll learn more? Will you be revising your models even more if you look at different points during the induction or do you not think you'll see such a change as you have by instead of grinding up a whole root, you're looking at a specific cell. So I guess I'm asking about your time scale of response. Yeah, time scale response. Like uh, they did uh, in the, uh, they did in the leaves for different time time points. Um, you only you need, uh we we did uh, for 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 uh around two point five hours because of the we need the time to isolate the propass, but that that wouldn't change you a lot. So so different time points they have similar. Is except to earlier start from thirty minutes to to uh one hundred eighty minutes. The response is similar. Right. Yeah, but, most of the things they were shared. Right, but you also have some very late responses in a lot of these sorts of systems, like Callus formation, which is much later. I'm just curious. I love your system. I think it's great. I'm just curious what you would think you would see if you took later time points, whether you would see later later events taking place, such as depositions and cell walls and things like that. That's all. Yeah, the later later immune response they they treat. Uh, for example, um, the the genes induced after one hour, then the these genes were worked on the were worked on the following pathways then to produce, like I say, and the calus deposition. So it's uh. So the later later response uh, could uh, uh, attribute to the early response on the transcription level. Thank you. Let's thank our speaker again.